Y'all, this is Tiny here from Mountain Way Adventures. Today I'm going to be working on my kayak again, doing another little DIY. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all use anchor trolleys. This one is the uh, setup for the not right system, which means it actually has uh, no drill. You just put it through here like this. Of course, you got your pulleys, your ring in the center. But fishing a lot of rivers, mostly rivers, some of them a little bit faster water, I don't really like all this cordage everywhere. I've got, of course, my anchor trolley rope, and then I've got my anchor rope, which you can use any rope. I know it's big and thick, a lot bigger and thicker than what I needed. But I end up with this rope everywhere. I end up with just stuff everywhere. And I haven't done it yet, but when I do tank my kayak, because I know it's going to happen, I know I'm going to turtle it, just know it. Eventually it's going to happen to all of us, right? But when I do, I don't want all this rope everywhere. The other thing is, I don't like the fact that when I drop anchor, I'm dropping it right off the side. And then I'm having to move to the front or back. If the water's got a little bit of movement to it, I just don't like it at all. The main thing I don't like is having to pull it back because I have to paddle back up to either do it. And then I'm still having to pull off the side of my kayak, trying to pull that weight up. And if it's hung for just a second, it feels like it can get you in a little bit of trouble. So I'm been pondering on how to do it. And uh, a couple of buddies of mine, they had done on their kayak uh, sort of like this, so I decided that I'm just going to try to run me some uh, anchor off the front, one off the back, because that's important to have in the rivers. So one off front, one off the back, and I don't want the rope everywhere, so I'm going to try to figure out a way to do it. The way I figured is I'm going to use some PVC to run my rope in. Now I had this laying around the house, so it ain't going to cost me nothing to try it. Uh, the only bad thing is I'm going to put a couple holes in the boat, so we'll see how that works out. But I was going to use CPVC because it's smaller, but I just happen to have some uh, gray half inch PVC conduit. So this is pretty near all that you're gonna to need to do it with is the PVC conduit. These little jobbers here, I don't know exactly what they're called, but they're used to hold a pipe in place and whatnot. You can buy them at the hardware store. These were nine cent a piece at my local uh, Farm Bureau farm store. Uh, I got some self-tapping screws here I'm gonna use. Actually, I think made for metal or something, but we we'll use them in making some dog kennels. And uh, I'm gonna try them for this. And then I'm gonna use a drill because I'm lazy. It's a socket end on for the screws. And some I'm gonna put silicone on. I'm not sure you need to put anything on there. All of the holes are gonna be up on top. But I'm gonna put a little bit of silicone on each one of them as I do it, just to make sure. So we're gonna get started here. I've already got one cleat here uh, attached. And I'm going to attach another one when it comes in. I bought them online, so I gotta wait for hit to come in. So, but today I'm gonna go ahead and run this and then I'll get the other ones on the video too. And we're gonna try to make this to where it'll run off the back of the kayak here. And I want it to run all the way down the side, kind of up on top here. And I'm gonna put my other cleat somewhere in here where my boat ruler is. That's just a piece of junk. I could go all the way to here, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm gonna to try to stop it right in here somewhere. It's gonna be a little more difficult to do, maybe put my everything up here because it's an airy. But I think it'll work just fine. So uh, let's get to going so what we can do here. All right, I reckon the first thing I need to do, figure out exactly where I wanna put this. Now what I'm figuring is, I can put my cleat anywhere up in here. I don't want to have to reach back behind me. As you can see, I'm a pretty big boy. So if I can keep it up here where I can grab a hold of it and still not be in my way, that'd be ideal situation. So I want to put it probably right in here. I'm looking at where my seat usually sits at and I have to set my seat up a little bit forward. Cause if not, on this wilderness ride, it just being a 115, me being a big boy, it still wants to ride a little piece like that. Uh, and that is bad in the river because my tail end is always dragging so i try to move my seat up just a little piece so i can sit pretty level and for everybody it's different exactly where the boat's going to sit level at so i'm figuring i want to have my cleat right in here so i don't think this needs to come all the way down to where i'm going to do it i think it'd be better if i did have just a little bit of space so i could unravel it without grabbing so i'm figuring on stopping my pipe right in here 
And that's gonna give me, maybe right here. That give me somewhere I can latch on to as well. I'm latch on right here. Cause I don't want to cover my rod holder. So I got it about where I want it. Simple, straight cut every time. Unlike when I tried to do it myself. All right, y'all, so I already put the first one in because I wasn't exactly sure how it's going to work. Uh, what I'm attempting here is to put a little silicone on them. And, uh, of course, I'm messy as can be. So I'm actually putting it on the bolt or screw best as I can and try to put a bunch up toward the head of it. And what I might actually do is go back and try to put some over top of the head where it goes on the over top of the whole thing here or something. Just to make sure it don't leak. I've had this boat five years. It's the first holes I've ever put in it. So I've always been a little skeptical of DIYs with you with holes in it. But I thought I'd give this a whirl because I'm just looking out for safety now. So I'm gonna get my pipe slid up in there just like that. Thing has to pop down over a little piece. And again, I gotta figure out exactly about where I want this before I start tightening this thing down. And you hear it clicking there, that's the clutch kicking in. That means it's pretty tight. And I'm just rubbing some the excess silicone I got all over my hands around the bolt and around that whole thing there to try to make it waterproof as possible. What it's probably gonna do is make a big mess on there. What you don't want to do is have no sharp edges. That's the one thing I'm trying to avoid. I don't want nothing to make me lose a fish or whatnot because I don't catch a whole lot anyhow anymore it seems like. And the last thing I want to do is lose some fish because of a anchor setup. I like to see that when I screwed that screw in, silicone kind of shot out from under. One thing I was impressed by is how long it actually took to get that screw in there. That tells me this thing built pretty solid. It's, it's fairly thick. So, you know, I kind of like that. Now I'll cut this off to size, close to the end here. So, I got this one cleat on. I did a little thing uh, where I took a, what they call a T-bolt. And I think it's a quarter inch, and I put it down in my track, and it, and boy, is it snug. I actually had to trim it down a little piece of the grinder to get to fit in there. <laughs> but it works better than the uh, pullet bolts, in my opinion. I drilled the hole out just a little bit bigger. You can see these bolts in there. So the bolts are screw into those T nuts, and I got a couple washers in there. I'm not sure it's ideal, but uh, it works. It, it's not going to do much sliding. That's the only bad thing. It's, if I was to use it for like sliding gear, like a rod holder or whatnot, it ain't gonna do much. But where I put this in here and I want it to be in there permanently, it worked out all right. Cause I had to tap it up in there. It's a little bit tight. So let's uh, get some piece of practice rope here and see what. All right, so I think I got halfway through my issues. I got this, uh, my guide on here. That's what I wanted. This one's already got the cleat on here. I'm gonna put another one on the back when it comes tomorrow. So this will get my, rope got it i'm gonna have this much rope exposed here and i'm gonna have a little bit more here i'll show you uh next part of the video here how i'm going to keep the rest of my rope from it just being tangled all over the deck because man that's that's a headache when you got rope just laying everywhere some of the spots i like to fish i'm gonna have to have 20 foot of rope you know it's only 10 foot deep but you need at least 20 foot to be able to drop anchor in 10 foot so you know 20 25 foot of rope easy but uh, with this zigzag cleat, I'm just gonna unhook it. 
and I got a piece of pipe up here because I didn't want to lift a full anchor. It's going to drop right down into the river. You let out your line, then you wrap it back around the zigzag. And it's the simplest way I found the anchor. And I mean, it's going to pull you like this, but that's going to hold. It's going to hold good. And uh, it's going to pull down just a little bit on this, but that's actually pulling against the kayak. It may pull a little bit left and right, it's the only thing I'm afraid of. But we'll have to see how well that holds up. But uh, up next, we're going to try to control the line on the deck of the kayak. But that's actually going to be tomorrow. It's going to be the second half of this video. But it's going to be tomorrow when I get my stuff in to do it. Appreciate y'all watching. So for the second half of this build, here's all the stuff I'm going to need. I'm going to need some more silicone. A couple more screws, not many. Some paracord. Some heat shrink tubing, maybe. I ain't decided on that yet. Something to drink. Uh, my driver. Except for the screws. And I decided to go with the retractable clothesline. Uh, I am going to replace the clothesline on there after reading some people's comments on it. But most people seem to think it's the best thing to do, so I'm going to be replacing it with some uh, just cheap paracord. Because they say this stuff just doesn't last that well. It's inside of there. But basically, as an overview, just want to show you what I've done. Oh, well, here's the reason I'm doing this whole thing with, the, with these dog leashes. As I've got my line ran up through here but this is still an issue and it's just a little piece of rope so that's a lot of rope sitting on the deck of my kayak and if something was to happen i was flip over i do not want to be caught up in all that mess so that's what i'm trying to avoid is a way to keep everything a little bit more sleek uh, a little bit more compact out of the way but here's what we've done yet our two days ago those are just screwed in there. I don't think I got close to public yesterday. And of course, I already have my cleat on this side installed into my slide tracks. And then same thing up front as far as the pipe goes. So let's uh, get to work. This is the side of the kayak I usually get on and off from. So I don't want a bunch of stuff down here in my way on this side. My rod holder is usually sitting on the left side, just the way I have it set up, no particular reason. So I think I'm going to put my uh, cleat right here. Motorcycle. Uh, got a little bit of in town. So I think that's what I'm going to do, I'm gonna put it right here. And I think these screws will hold it. If it ends up not working, I'm going to have to go with a big old rivet. Because, uh, and I'll tell you why it wasn't yesterday. Because I ordered these, I ordered this first ones from Amazon. Amazon Prime, two-day shipping. No problem. Order is from Walmart. Guaranteed two-day shipping. Trying to compete with Amazon. Ha <laughs> didn't happen. So they ended up being four-day shipping because of a shipping error. It was with the company. And if you watched my other video, uh, we camping. I talked about a little piece. How it irritated the far out of me. All right, already done this off camera because there wasn't no point in uh, showing you something that's so silly on camera. But I put all this uh, clothesline out, a whole big old pass left, I think it's 40 foot or so. I bought this off Amazon. I didn't go with Walmart on it. Uh, I take it back, I did go with Walmart on it, but it came in a little uh, quicker. So all I'm going to do here, I got this clamped off so it won't run all the way back up in there because once it disappears, it's gone. I'm going to cut it about right in here you gotta get me a pair of pliers to do that that should give me enough room for my loop my paracord you gotta undo it because it comes in a whoop notch just not so all i'm gonna do is tie a simple sheep's shank uh, something i learned to do in boy scouts you can google it there if you need to know how to tie it there's a number of knots you can tie, but for me, this works uh, as well as anything as far as joining two pieces of rope together. So, it holds really good and doesn't fail. As a matter of fact, the more you pull on it, the tighter it gets. 
that's the only disadvantage to a sheep shank it's really not good for uh, undoing a knot if you ever had to undo it like all right so when the heat shrink tubing won't work i had to take this apart and put it back together again uh it wouldn't work because it just wasn't big enough and that's all the store here carry i turned my old trusty friend electrical tape and all this is going to do is keep these ropes together and keep everything from just spraying out quite as far and it should actually increase my uh, ability to get more on here it'll increase the strength too but i ain't worried about that because if it gets down to where this is what's holding me, I'm in big trouble. If you ever see it on the video, you know I'm in big trouble. So I'm gonna cut this off just a little bit shorter. Got that little bitty strands of wire in there, but it ain't much. It ain't much more than a, like a telephone or a TV cable or something. So I got that wrapped up. <laughs> now, like I said, I got this clamp right here and that's to keep it from retracting when I didn't want it. I did show you, I also have one of these on the other end just to make sure it don't slip through my hands and I don't lose it that way. That all my paracord, which I don't think all it'll fit, but we'll see. Sucking in there pretty fast right now. I don't know about y'all, but every time I open up a new thing of paracord, I got to fight knots in it for 15, 20 minutes. Let's pull one in there. Okay, and that's about all it's going to go, which is still fine, because I think it's going to be about the right distance to my front end, I think. If I had to cut five or six foot off, then, you know, I had to cut five or six foot off. Oh, well, there it goes. I said to move it over a little piece so it wind right. As you can see, I've actually got it clamped here to keep it from going all the way in, just in case. With the magic of, uh, magic of fast forwarding and editing and whatnot, I've kind of skipped ahead here. I pulled out a little piece of rope and I also clamped it off right here because I don't have nothing tied to this other end yet. So I'm afraid it'll just uh, kind of go where it wants right now. So what I want to do is I'm going to try to thread it through here. I'll park near anywhere. I have to push it back up in there because it's a lot of weight riding on the thing. 10 pounds at that angle is a lot. So, I'm going to be able to do this. It'll be easier in this position. It's going to bang a little bit, I'm afraid, till I figure something out there, maybe. But then when I need to pick it off, I drop it down, let out whatever line I need. down let out whatever line I need the river's flowing the line out and I zigzag it stops completely so there's no trouble at all no weight's actually held on this right here it doesn't have any weight at all on it it's all held by the zigzag and hopefully the screws will hold just fine got a lot of silicone around them but that's good so Next thing I do is, is figure out what to do with this. And I think for now I'm just going to zip tie it in there. So I'll see exactly how I like it. Kind of put it right here beside my seat. And uh, see exactly what changes I need to make, if, if any, as far as uh, position and whatnot. Alright, so I've done the same thing on this side. I've set it there. I run up to where my anchor cleat will hold it because I don't have any weight on it right now. So my next step is to actually feed it through. My CPVC pipe again, like I said, or PVC conduit. I actually wanted CPVC because it is smaller in diameter, but I had this laying around, and you're looking at a half inch uh, inside diameter versus half inch outside diameter. It ain't all that much of a difference. It's a little piece, but the good thing is that this is a more of a neutral color, I guess. It's gray instead of that yellowish color that CPVC pipe is and it's also uh, UV resistant. So I'm going down the river, it's actually gonna be hanging off the front of my kayak, for now at least. I may try to make something to where it don't beat up again. It, traveling, of course, I'll, I'll take it and actually put it in the boat. So it ain't that big of a deal, but you know, going through the waves and whatnot, that's gonna beat pretty hardcore. 
Good thing is this silicone coated. That one is at least. That's the one on the back end. But basically all I'm gonna do is when I get somewhere I wanna anchor, I'm just gonna do that. I gotta sit. It's gonna drop my anchor right off. And then I'm going to because I think I missed it. Like right now it's got a little weight on it. I'm gonna put it in the zigzag. And it's gonna keep any pressure from coming onto this. I have all kinds of pressure on that. As you can see my weight ain't even all the way on the ground so it's got some pressure. <coughs> so when I wanna lift anchor, I simply do it from my zigzag it's easier when you're sitting there and this beside the kayak you ain't got a bit of leverage so I'm about to drop my camera on that one I'm gonna pull it up and put it right back in my zigzag simple as that so when this is all said and done the rope on my deck is from there there you see that ain't too furry fur and from here to here well that ain't very far either that ain't very much rope exposed at all look at all that mess of clothesline <laughs> stuff was everywhere and then on this side well you can see it ain't nothing at all then of course from there it's a dog leash so i think it's really going to work it's going to make it a little bit safer for me try it out here a couple times and uh, see what happens well I hope y'all learned something here uh, I hope that I was successful in, in trying to show exactly what I was doing I am gonna take it down on the water course and try it a few times and, and make sure it's what I like pretty simple build pretty inexpensive the uh, let's see the rope was about three dollars at the Walmart the cleats uh, you can get a two-pack for eight dollars and something which you're going to anchor off, I recommend having one of them zigzag cleats anyways. It just makes life so much better. The most expensive part were the clotheslines. Uh, they were $8 and something. They were Honeydew brand. 40 foot retractable clotheslines. Like I said, I pulled that junk off there. The weights I had, the uh, PVC conduit I had, the screws I had, silicone I had. If you had to buy all that, it cost you a few bucks, I guess. Maybe $10. I, I don't know if it would be quite that much. But what it has done, like I said, it actually freed up my deck from rope and a chance of me getting hung up in it. And that's very important to me. But I appreciate y'all watching. We'll try to do better next time.